Okay, today let's talk about puzzles. Now, to start with, I'm not going to really talk about puzzle games. That is a discussion all by itself, one that I'm not convinced that I'm particularly qualified to talk about. If you're interested in that, I'll link to a video by Mark Brown over at Game Makers Toolkit. I think he does a really good job talking about some of the issues in puzzles in general and puzzle games specifically. I think those things are applicable to puzzles in other kinds of games. So so if you are interested, definitely check that out. Not that he needs my help. His channel is more than 100 times bigger than this one. Specifically, what I'm going to talk about today is puzzles in other kinds of games. You see them in open world games. You see them in all kinds of games where in the middle of the gameplay, there's a puzzle of some sort, a lock picking puzzle or some sort of magical beams puzzle that your player has to figure out in order to progress. The problem is, that unlike a puzzle game, other kinds of games haven't set this expectation very well about the rules of how this works. So a puzzle game has been building you up over its various levels, giving you new mechanics, teaching you new ways to think about solving puzzles, understanding the space better and better. And as a result, you are able to tackle relatively difficult puzzles. In addition, in a puzzle game, the frustration of not knowing the solution, the gnawing at the problem and trying to figure out is part of the fun. It's what you're looking for. But neither of those things is actually true in other kinds of games. The puzzle that you've injected into the the middle of your critical path, you haven't set that expectation with your player that they should be frustrated, that they should think outside the box, that they should even necessarily understand the way the mechanics go together in this particular case. So they can often end up being places where people get stuck and rather than trying to be clever and figure out a way past, they either just go on the internet and look up a solution or in the worst case, they stop playing your game altogether. Additionally, one of your problems you're going to have is potentially that your possibility space is much larger than a puzzle game. This isn't necessarily the case. If you look at the constellation puzzles in Dragon Age Inquisition, those are in a completely separate mode. So it, that is able to distill the possibility space way down and it is essentially just a tiny little puzzle game inside a much larger game. But when you do puzzles that use the mechanics of of the rest of your game, which is a great idea, you have to remember that the mechanics of the rest of your game, the interaction of those systems is a very large possibility space. If I can pick up things and blow up things and fly and attract monsters around and cast fire spells and cast ice spells, and combine those spells together in different ways, then when you get into the mood and logic situation of a puzzle, it's very difficult to figure out what the designer was thinking because the possible things you could do is so, so large. So in that case, you might wanna think problem as opposed to puzzle. And what I mean is a puzzle, there is one or maybe a few solutions that are very specifically designed into the puzzle, the world reacts to a specific solution, and that's the only way past. A problem is more open-ended, where you need to get past this wall, but there are a multitude of ways that that can be accomplished. And at the end of the day, you're not even necessarily designing a solution at all. You're just putting the problem there and letting the player figure something out. I guess it's probably worth me defining what moon logic is. Moon logic is a term used with puzzles where the solution to the puzzle makes sense in retrospect but is very unlikely to be discoverable by a player in the mechanics. This is something that's very easy to happen in puzzles because of course you as the player are not the designer of the puzzle. You do not have the same thought processes. So whatever thing that they did that they thought would be obvious for anyone to figure out. Oh, of course the answer is cat 
because I put this piece of music on the piano that's in C major and then behind it was a piece in A major and then behind that was a T bag C C A T how could anyone not figure that out these are the kinds of things that end up becoming baffling to most players so you have to be very careful when you're designing a puzzle to try to avoid moon logic literally things that yes you can make sense of after the fact but are impossible to figure out in the moment at every step in your puzzle you are going to have a number of potential actions the player can take and if the puzzle is unbounded that number of actions is very very large and it makes the probability of them being able to figure out the one possible correct solution very very low but i don't think that necessarily you should therefore or abandon puzzles in your standard gameplay in non-puzzle games. Because I think there's a huge opportunity there that often isn't taken advantage of, where you can use the puzzle elements to give the player a better and deeper understanding of the mechanics of the game by giving them a puzzle that they need to use the mechanics in a specific way to solve. Hearthstone, in some of their solo adventures does a very good job of this. It's still the same card game as ever, but you are given a specific hand of cards and you're playing against a very specific situation. So what they do in this case is turn the problem of figuring out how to beat your opponent and having a very large set of ways to do that, and they turn it into a puzzle where you need to use the card mechanics in a specific way in order to get past this specific challenge. And by doing that, what they're able to do is to teach you how some of these mechanics work better and potentially open up the probability space for you in order to make you better at the game. So that's an opportunity that isn't often exploited in a lot of games. And I think it is one that's worth considering when you are making your game. That being said, puzzles are incredibly difficult because they are a specific problem with a specific solution. So their level of authorship is very high. This is the reason why puzzle games often have a relatively limited number of levels because in order to build them and test them and make sure that they're understandable, you need to spend a lot of time and then you need to make sure that your difficulty ramp makes sense. Whereas if you are giving the player a problem then honestly you just kind of need to make sure that there's some way past it and then just let the player loose and there you go. Doesn't necessarily mean it's fun, but at least it means it's possible. Bioware is almost infamous for using the Towers of Hanoi for a puzzle in its games. Going back very far into the past, I believe it's even in Baldur's Gate 1, implemented in the dialogue system. Towers of Hanoi, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is a series of rings that are stacked up on top of each other, a smaller ring on top of a bigger ring into a pyramid of rings. And the goal of the puzzle is to get that stack from one peg to another peg while maintaining the requirement that you only ever put a smaller ring on top of a larger ring, moving one ring at a time. This is a very old puzzle and the solution is not particularly complicated. It is simply, it's a recursion problem. The way to get a, the way to get a stack of four rings from peg one to peg three first is get the stack of three rings on top of the fourth ring onto stack two so you can move the fourth ring onto the third the third peg and then you can just iterate backwards from that so once you know the solution for towers of hanoi it's actually pretty easy to do and it's actually not a terrible puzzle in that if your pyramid is relatively short you can kind of brute force your way through it but you can also very quickly turn this kind of puzzle into something super annoying because every time you add another ring to the stack the number of steps you need to take to complete it goes up by a lot so not necessarily one i would recommend it's also a bit of a cliche in the rpg space mainly due to bioware overuse
using it massively, but you do have a lot of other sort of just logic puzzles in that space. There's the classic, you have a fox, a chicken, and some corn, and you need to cross a river in a boat, but you can only take one of them at a time. How do you get all three across the river without the fox eating the chicken or the chicken eating the corn? The good thing about these kinds of puzzles is if you can be this clear on the outcome and the parameters, then a lot of the problems of that in-world broadness of possibility space can go away. But it also can become a bit arbitrary, a bit forced that you're having a puzzle like this in the middle of your game. You need some degree of theming to make it make some degree of sense. So your Towers of Hanoi puzzle is somehow the electronic locking mechanism of the door or you have the line connecting puzzle from Dragon Age Inquisition, or you do the fox chicken corn puzzle in world with the mechanics of your regular game, but you just let the player do whatever they want and turn the puzzle into potentially a problem because maybe they can put the chicken to sleep and then it doesn't eat the corn and then they don't need to worry about it. So potentially start with a puzzle and then let the player use the mechanics in a clever way to figure out something else. I think that puzzles in non-puzzle games are an interesting palette cleanser, an interesting opportunity, but they can very easily turn into chores. And because it isn't the primary kind of game your studio likely is making, the chance of you falling into moon logic is very high. So you need to be careful, and that's a reason why often you see if there is a puzzle somewhere later in development, the developers end up putting the solution to the puzzle on the wall right beside the puzzle itself because they discovered that people weren't figuring it out. The clues, despite how heavily they thought they had bred from them, weren't clear enough and they decided that they just needed to put the solution right there. Not a great solve, but a solve nonetheless. If you are interested in puzzles, I think there are lots of uh, resources out there that can prime the pump for you. Again, I would recommend Game Maker's Toolkit as a starting place. Don't necessarily shy away from them in your games. They give you an opportunity to reinforce the mechanics of your gameplay, or they give you an opportunity to provide a palette cleanser in the middle of your gameplay if you enter into a separate mode the player interacts with. Just be aware, however, that if you put them on your critical path, then the player needs to be able to solve them. So if it's a puzzle, then you might need to provide a very easy way to get past it. If it's a problem, on the other hand, you may not because you might be able to get away with them just mastering the mechanics well enough to get past your problem. Alternatively, you can consider taking your puzzles and keeping the simplest ones on the critical path so you can teach the player the rules of how it works and then moving all of the more challenging puzzles off of the critical path so that you don't have to ensure the player can get past them. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources this channel needs to keep running. If you are interested in becoming a member, there's a link down in the description. If you enjoyed this primer on puzzles outside of puzzle games, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with someone else you think might get some use out of it. I will see you again soon. Thank you.